Switch. Yeah, alright. No, that's better. Alright, so... Everyone's Boom! Been... Headshot! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Steal my thunder again. See what happens to your face. Um, anyways. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Uh, punch. I've got way too much caffeine in my system. Anyways, um... Yeah, we've all been like seeing what's going on with the Occupy Wall Street protesters. I don't even know if they know what they're protesting anymore. I just see a bunch of dirty hippies deadlocked in a park saying that 1%, you know, of Americans shouldn't control about 99% of the wealth. But the funny thing is, you know, there's a lot of anime characters jumping in on this bandwagon too. Naruto is making a stand and the Levi hit, hit him. He is, trust me, he's making a stand against this tyranny. He is saying that 1% of the villains should not control 99% of the tail beasts. Oh. Yeah, I know, I'm really digging low for that one. <laughs> uh, come on. Come on, you know, don't judge me. I don't see you doing any better here, buddy. You're just standing there. This is gonna be the coolest party ever! <laughs> You're what the hell is that? Thank you, thank you for that. That was pretty good, actually. I'll give you that. Anyways, um, you know, I completely lost my train of thought. That is gonna screw me up relentlessly tonight. Relentlessly. We're talking about the, uh... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, you know, but I made my point there, more or less. But yeah, I don't even know if these people actually know what they're protesting anymore. The fact of the matter is this, I mean, yeah, you're standing up to like, you know, show these people what's wrong with the world, but the fact of the matter is, how can you possibly show them anything when all you look like is a bunch of dirty hippies camping in a park? You know, my whole thought on this is, get out there and do some actual good. If we actually shut down Wall Street, it's only going to make it worse. We need to let economy run its course, but that's just what happens. I slipped on an ice cube and got covered in boo-boos. Boo-boos, eh? Hmm. I think you guys want that hospital. We need a general! My love for SpongeBob is unparalleled. I mean... By, by the way, that's how you troll infant. <laughs> yes, no, he's absolutely right. Join me on the internet. You know what that statement actually reminds me of? Yeah. The current healthcare plans. Okay, you have a point there. Obamacare, you know, is flawed. But, you know, say, someone did need to address it. And, but anyways, moving on to other things. God, I, cartoons these days... I remember growing up watching Ren and Stimpy, you know? The, the most twisted of the twisted of the twisted cartoons that you possibly could have ever seen. They just made the wrong look so right. And then what kids these days watch is borderline retarded. And we wonder why, like, you know, they can't handle anything. Look at who they're learning from. I mean, SpongeBob is one of the greatest examples ever. He's a dipshit sponge living in a pineapple under the sea who doesn't do anything productive other than flip burgers for his life. What life lesson does that teach our children? That it's okay to be a bottom dwelling retard that flips burgers for a living? I, I don't get it. Like, you know, that does, that's not a positive role model. Look at his friends. He's got a stoner, you know, starfish. That's never been better. Yeah, but look at him. Like, you know, there's only two things that do that to you. That's smoking during pregnancy and excessive pot. It's always, it's always child yeah. abuse. And you got, like, the squid living next door that's got a permanent stick up his ass. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, they, they, you need to know that there are assholes in the world, but no one is nearly as bad as that dipshit is. Wow. Uh, all right, granted, granted. <laughs> Moving on. And, and then you got, you know... The money grubbing crab, which is an obvious reference to, you know what, Cartman would uh, you know like that one if we could. Well, yeah, there we go. I'm just like waiting for like you know Cartman to show up in bikini bottom and just like start ripping Mr. Crab a new one. <laughs> Insinuating that he's got money stashed away in his greedy Jew cave somewhere. Oh, <laughs> hey, you know. Nothing against the Jews. They do my taxes. Great. Don't forget to bring a towel. <laughs> Thank you very much. What? When you get out of the water, you need to dry off. What was that? I thought it was filling my drink. I don't. It's got a shellfish, so not actually. It's, a, it's kind of a funny statement. He's, a, he, he, he's the biggest money pitcher of all time, yet he is a non-kosher meal. Well, you know, contradiction is like ripe in cartoons, but um, you know, moving on. Yeah, I really do think that SpongeBob is probably the worst thing we could possibly be showing our children. Now, I'm not saying that I don't mind watching it. Thank you for bringing him to us, boys. You see, this is... <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> now, it makes perfect sense to me when I'm like, you know, 20 deep in a 30 rack of PBR, but, you know, that's because I'm an idiot. So, good to go. But, all right, so, children's cartoons, yeah, they ain't what they used to be, but at the same time, they weren't anything kind of right home about back in the day anyways. 
What's bothering me more so now is like, you know, the Seth MacFarlane block oh, on uh, Fox Sundays. Don't get me started on Seth MacFarlane. He is... It all started great and fine dandy in the beginning, but like, you know, look at what Family Guy's become now. He's been far Bridgeport. It, it's just a matter of like, you know, he's like pretty much scraped the bottom of the barrel as far as he can go, and now it's just all about shock value, and there's only so much fun in that. I can only see Peter, like, you know, stuff Meg's face in his ass so many times before the joke becomes old. Well, there are some, like, you know, gems still in it, but, like, I just don't get it anymore. I mean, well, no, what bothers me, too, is, like, you know, now they've got this effeminate Alan, Alan Gregory bullshit. If I wanted to watch a, you know, a pseudo-gay five-year-old court a 70-year-old principal woman, I'd go down to the senior center and get my handful right there. Or you go right back to family, guy. Nah, nothing to scrape at the bottom there or there, but you know what? I digress. I'm just angry and bitter. Anyways, I think this is about as good as we're going to get for now. Nice and perfect. I'm sending a runner. Marina, where you at? What the that hell are you wearing on your head? That, this sir, is a Turkish smoking cap. I am a count named Silk Brass. I've let my hair down just for your show. Well, I, I appreciate it. that. And I'm bringing that. Toga Commander. That's right. Toga Commander. <laughs> He's out right now because he needs to hydrate and get his toga. I have a fear. It's right next to you. Yeah, ah, he's still right next to you. Toga Commander, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't name Silk Brass. Toga Commander. Toga Silk Brass 2012. <laughs> night night in presence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that? Hell is that? Extremely disturbing, but you keep reaching for that rainbow. I appreciate your lifestyle, even if I don't follow it. <laughs> you know, the one thing I can just cannot wrap my head around right now is what the current obsession with My Little Pony is. Yeah, I agree. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean... Which is why we at Steampunk Studios are putting together Fakeonox, Tales of the Fakeonox Pony Express. My Little Pony is animated by Todd McFarlane. Oh, God. That might be interesting, but still, I mean... I understand that, like, you know, there's like a 10 year, 15 year cycle that's unspoken. Everything old is new again, kind of thing. But it's. I actually tried watching My Little Pony because I did get desperate one afternoon, and it was just. What am I seeing here? It falls into the same vein as SpongeBob. It's a bunch of half retarded ponies with shitting rainbows flying across the sky, saving the Try again, Shady! Was that. Was that right? <laughs> I hope not, because I have no idea, but I will admit, like, the only good thing I've seen from that is everyone knows the whole trend of the internet was Kyle Steamworks. <laughs> everyone knows the trend on the internet, right, where, like, you know, Guile theme works over everything. I do admit it does work well over My Little Pony. I have actually tried to watch you GobbleCon staff. Toga Commander, would you shoot the audio-visual individual, please? Please do it. Hey, seriously. I've actually, I've, I've been you up. I have tried watching that once. It's had it, so. It made me want to break my own ears off. There's no way to describe it. It's just, it's horrible. Yes. Bring out your dick. All right, well, I think what we'll do while we're waiting for the bulk of people to come in is we'll do a preliminary interview. So I'm going to casually sit over here. Music from Well, it seems we have a special treat for you today. Let's give a round of applause for our fine young Lust and Greed are going to be joining us from the wonderful land of Amestris. Come on, let's get some audience of people. Show some love with the hater right now. What? We will switch the light, it'll make this easier. What is what? Okay, so I'd like to welcome the both of you to Gobble tonight. I am Rob Cable, your wonderful host, and this is my Ed McMahon, who shall be named Scruffy for the evening. <laughs> I have missed that nickname so much, you don't even know. <laughs> Alright, so you two are wonderful people. Join us from Amestris today. We are. Yep. What can you tell me about this wonderful land? I mean, I hear so many good things about it. It's a land of alchemical bounty, crazy storylines and plot twists, other wonderful things. Lieutenant, the keys one in short skirts. Some pretty hot bitches, I'm not gonna lie. We got some of those going on. Oh, good heavens. You got to share a microphone. It's dead. 
It says low power. Her I name is Lust. I think she can handle sharing a microphone. I hate it when a tool can't handle it. Oh. oh. Giggity. I just wanted to apologize. Oh, it's just a little bit I don't know if it's on yet. It says, wow. Turn it on. Yeah, turn that on, Lust. Hello. Okay, there we go. Welcome to the show. It's good. Hi-ho. It's good to be Yo. here. Hello. Oh, look at all the beautiful people. I just wanted to apologize for my brother. He can be a bit crass. There is a bit more to mesh just than the attractive women, although there are quite a few of those. But a mistress is a land with, as you mentioned, intense alchemical promise, and which is why we've shown such an interest in the country. Now, I hear you're big on sacrifices. Well, you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking about, like, you know, not just a couple eggs here. We're talking about a couple million eggs. And morally, you don't feel bankrupt at all about that? I mean, you gotta take what you gotta take. If you're a greedy person and there's, you know, it's laid out there before you, you gotta take it. If some people suffer for it, at least you're up on top of the pile. But what, no is there, shame, what yeah, pile is there left to be on top of you kill everyone to make it? Good point. <laughs> Still, I mean, you've got father, you've got your other siblings. You know, I mean, what, what is the game plan? What is the end game? Is it just going to be seven people fighting it out for the hell of it? Well, please keep in mind that a mistress is not the entire world. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. You know, there's well, drama to the north. I just think that when it comes to cracking eggs, what's one country in exchange for the globe? I would agree with that sentiment myself. And so would the U.S. government. Oh. We're big fans. <laughs> yeah, you seem like you should've known the Bush administration. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, is uh, Ed really as short as he appears to be? He's shorter. Really? In all regards. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, did a shorty do this? Who else wanna call me a half white pizza pal midget? I'm still going- Sounds about right. What about Al? How's he stack up? Well, considering he's only a giant hollowed suit of armor, he has very big and capable hands. Ooh. <sighs> Still, I mean, there's nothing in there. That's got to be the coldest fisting in the history of mankind. A fist is a fist, darling. <laughs> You're not the one that makes black holes, right? Because I can see how that might work for you. No, that's not my specialty. I didn't think so. Excuse me. <laughs> well, we do know your brother is capable of getting hard very fast. <laughs> yeah, but for the record, you did fall to Ed pretty fast. Well, you know, here's the thing. With all due respect to the short round on that one, you know, you seem clearly outmatched in a battle of wits. Short? Now, now, that's not very fair. Bon Mott's aren't exactly his strong suit. <laughs> okay, okay, you know, I'll give you that one. But, you know, you have to look at it objectively from the perspective of the user. I mean, technically it wasn't even Ed that cut you down, it was Bradley at that point. Oh! Well, you, you know, the thing that Bradley has going on, he's a little different from the rest of us. I, I try to distance myself from my siblings. They're doing their thing, I try to do my own thing. When they interfere, you know, what can I do? It's true, he's always been very strong-willed. Okay, well, quick, oh, question for greed then. What was it like working with the prince? Uh, you know, I, I prefer to work by myself. I've got a couple of trusted cohorts uh, that I like to keep around. Working with him, uh, I mean, you guys, had a, you guys had a real love-hate relationship. I mean, something along the lines of a Demi and Ashton almost. Even with the ugly split. Yeah, I got a question for you. How did it feel doing the series twice? <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> well, which would you prefer doing, the first one or the uh, second series? Oh, the first series, by far. I think we felt we said what we had to say the first series around. Uh, I, mean, I disagree to us on a certain extent. You sitting on tax there, buddy? <laughs> no, I disagree to a certain extent. You know, because the first series... There was just seemed like, you know, there was way too many bullshit filler episodes. Stuff that someone just made up to fill a spot in God knows whatever. 
That's a fair enough critique, but in the first series, I did get to cozy up to that exquisite Ishbalan warrior. Okay, 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 okay. I have my- That's opinion. hardly the point! <laughs> I would say that was the entire point for me. More than just one more. I think the giggity was implied yeah. right there. All right, so obviously you're out for the lookers, you know. The I seems am to be lust, the top darling. List. I have my priorities. All right, let, let's say this. Uh, why do you always hang around with a fat man? Everything gets better after that. He makes me look even better oh, by comparison. Oh, yeah. Okay, but seriously, so you're all baddies. If you're into the good-looking guys, what the hell is with Doctor Mar? You and Doctor Marco? That was strictly business. I do what father tells me to do, and sometimes I just have to do some unsavory things. I bet he begged to differ. You know, you turn your head the other way, get one of your magic fingers going, and well, bam. Turning the head away being the key point, I didn't really pay attention. He was fairly easy. Handy J is a handy J is a handy J. Is anyone thinking about I believe I already Jackson? made this point. <laughs> Like this, I go through this whole conversation, all I can think is the Jackson family. <laughs> well, hey, that's not a bad comparison, actually. The Jackson family is on the par of fucked up as, uh, that whole mess. They like we're the best. <laughs> we pride ourselves on being the best at fucked up families. Hacked up, fuck! Don't send a runner to the masquerade. Don't send a runner to the masquerade when you need us. I am single, oh yes. No, oh, let me. Oh, okay. No, thank you. Okay, guys. I wish you were cheese. <laughs> the hell is that? Oh, do it, do it. He loves it. He loves it. Toga Commander, ladies and gentlemen. I, a town named Silkbrass, and Toga Commander shall return. Toga Silkbrass, 2012. So, what can you tell me about Father? I think, you know, I'm a big fan of Inside the Actor Studio, so I'm going to rip a little bit here from that. Just to wrap this up with... He does look like James Lipton. Well, you know, James Lipton is a good guy. But anyways, favorite curse word. Douche bucket? <laughs> I'm a big fan of cunt. Giggity. <laughs> All right, well... <laughs> we thank you for your time and thank you for being on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, give a hand for Lust and Pride. I'm sorry, I'm oh, 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 fail on me. Fail on me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> lust and Greed. Yeah, let's hit the bar, huh? I will. They're going off to join themselves on the father of, lap of father. Okay, let's find ourselves another guest out there to bring up on stage and get an interview going with. Personally, I like Yeah, you know what? Your thumb is pointing to exactly where my mind was what? thinking. Huh? Where? You heard me. Me? Yeah, you. Okay. Yeah, personally, I like to see the panda come up here, too, just for kicks. What, we want to do this as a team? Yeah, not. Nah. All right, sure, whatever. I I'm game. Ladies and gentlemen, Sora from Kingdom Hearts and a random panda. Woo! That's right, show the love for these two random characters. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things is not all right, so, hello, Sora, Panda, yes. welcome to Gobble tonight. We are having a lot of feedback. Can you turn on the mic sensitivity? Hello, that's me. New York. Hello. Give me one more. Yeah, you gotta take me down a notch. I'm gonna like, getting crazy feedback. You got one mic there, guys. You gotta share it. Yeah, you only got one. Just one. All right, I'll just hold it far away from the mouth for now. And don't get it. Anyways, his voice Sora. is too powerful. Yeah. Sora, yes. Random Panda, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Glad so, uh, Sora, let me uh, start with you here. Um, how does it feel to be another overly androgynous Square Enix character? It's... I mean, do you got girly parts, you got boy parts? What the fuck is it? Well, let's just say I haven't cross dressed yet, so I'm not on exactly the exactly idealistic level of Cloud. But uh, I am extremely overused and, and over, you know, excited about, but it's okay. All right, yeah, just a point of interest for me. How the fuck do you cut anything with a keyblade? It doesn't even look like it's remotely sharp. Do you just, like, indiscriminately bash hoping you open the key to death or something? Yeah, that's something I'm curious about myself. Okay, you know keys that you open doors with, like regular metal keys? 
Alright, I, I, I know what a key is for. No, but... Keys are sharp. Keys can be sharpened and they can... What the hell keys are you playing with? <laughs> Let's just say they're not your average keys. Okay. Is someone overcompensating for something? Like any experience character? Actually, here's another question for you. I got a different one. At one point, were you not a mermaid? I enjoy musicals, thank you. Still doesn't prove my way you're a mermaid, man. <laughs> Musicals. Culture. Support the arts. At any cost. Thank you. No, here's the thing. If you want to support the fine arts, do the logical thing and shoot a rapper. <laughs> hey, you know, in, in all honesty, Eminem's not a bad rapper. He's He speaks from the heart. And from his ass. Thank what you. What about the rest of them? They suck! All right, anyways, you know. All right, let's go to the random panda. Yeah, thank you. I was just about to get there, too. Random panda, I mean, what brings you here? <laughs> okay, random panda. You're awfully fleshy under that hood to be making you. I know, right? Like white you have system. digits. You have digits and opposable thumbs. Well, for the record, most anime characters do, like, especially like animals have random opposable appendages. You never go full panda. Oh. Thank you for that Tropic Thunder reference. Are you the panda that's playing a panda that thinks he's a panda that is a panda? In other words, share. <laughs> Rawr. Isn't there an anime, the Japanese anime, where they're like in... in Dude, there is an anime for everything. There's, there's humans in animal suits and they're in the forest and there's like a wolf where they're, he's cowardly and then there's a rabbit. And like, you might be thinking of an episode of Shin Chan. Or the Wizard of Oz. What I was thinking. The anime Ranma. Mm. Isn't that about a crossdresser? So, wait, wait, wait. Now you're no longer a panda, you're Axl Rose after a pack of mentals. <laughs> I was thinking Drew Carey after a long night of, well, being by himself. Oh, uh, no, Carey's got a good these days. He landed himself a solid gig on The Price is Right. All he has to do is spay a couple of pets every week and he's employed for life. I thought he spayed Bob Barker. He might have. That would have been a public service announcement for the rest of us. Well, be a public that service asshole spayed me. Yeah. Yeah. We got a take care of him. Right, let's get back to Nick. Or Sora, whatever his name is. No, no, here's the thing. I'm actually quite fixated on random panda now that he's like... You know, no, I am like... Is this a man or is this a panda? I am really oh. fixated on random panda now that he's like, you know, got his Axel Rose thing going on. I know, like, are so, you a man? No, no, are, are, you, are, you, are you putting the band, are you putting the band back together? Am I going to see, like, you know, at a world tour for bamboo and roses? Hi. And all of a sudden he's Japanese. <laughs> Wait, Chinese, Japanese, what the fuck's the difference? A continent. <laughs> yeah, there would be that. Where I'm from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Sora, back to you. I mean, how many more sequels do you plan to be in? I mean, do you see yourself working with this current universe of play you're in for a good amount of time? Well, there is already one planned game, supposedly the third mainstream one. And then after that, I don't really know. It, not really my call. Our contract with... At least it's not delayed like Chinese democracy. What? <laughs> that just went ev when that was just everyone's... A, that was a really bad GNR. Everybody look yeah. up. Because that's where the joke just went. <laughs> Over your head. Alright, anyways. Very much. I don't know. Maybe. Right. I got a question. So, are you, what, are you, you gonna gonna actually... Is that you have no job security, no means to fall back on, no insurance, you know, because you're just getting your ass beat all the time, aren't you? Pretty much. You know? That's why there's potions, all right? Yeah, but here's the thing. What, did you even negotiate in your contract? Do you even have any kind of, you know, backup plan or even, like, a, a, a chip off the, the price? Of the, the, the I am a Square one? Enix character. That doesn't mean shit in the long it means run. nothing. <laughs> they all got their own combined game. Two of them. From Final Fantasy 1 to 13. But you're basically telling me there's no long-term viability. I mean, what kind of fool are you to take a job like that in this market? You know, why not, like, you know, go into the world of corporate banking, have security for 20 years, build a nest egg, retire to the country? I'm 16. Are you sure it's legal? Well, then again, you have to look at the Olsen twins. They're, like, they're like rich beyond belief for working like... Yeah, but they're also disgusting and whorish. Yeah. 
Yeah, but they were like that when they were doing the full house. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that one. Yeah. You know, they, made <laughs> their, that one. they made their money as For the children. record, I mean, that, that was all Bob Saget's fault. <laughs> well, honestly, <laughs> I'm 16. I'm not exactly no... How like, can you be 16 when, like, the first game came out, like, eight years ago? Shouldn't I went like, through puberty throughout the entire, like, first game. Shouldn't you be 26, surly, old, and, like, you know... Long gone from memory by now. Well, for the rest, right. stay babies for so long. He's got a point. Yeah, he's got me there. Yeah. <laughs> I got. And look at Spon- look at all those potions, man. Not to, not to go back to SpongeBob, but the guy's I don't know, thirties. He doesn't. Thank Spongebob. you. The guy doesn't have his license. He keeps failing, and he has a job somehow. Well, he's lumped into the he's same. He's under the table. I. You work in face it. He's got no actual paycheck. I can fly a ship. I don't need it. The point I'm trying to make is there is no video game welfare system, and I don't want some deadbeat, broke ass video game star knocking on the door for my tax dollars. Well, for the record, Mario blocks on my door every day. Mario's doing good for himself. Well, he's a plumber, and that's yeah. a damn good reason in your case. Yeah. Oh, hey! Oh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Saying like you know, a man blows up a shitter every now and then. <laughs> okay, I just want to say. I feel you. much better now. <laughs> That's actually what I say every time. <laughs> just don't let him ever show you the real liquid plumber. Then you might have some issues. <laughs> All right, let's get back to random pandas. Yeah, you know, I'm just utterly confused by what the hell you're supposed to be in this whole mess. I mean, what do you do with your random panda days? Kung Fu! No, that's, that's Jack Black. Skadoosh! Oh. Why <laughs> did I have to bring it up? Actually, typically he brought it up. I am so done with you after that. <laughs> if I could, like, you know, obtain the capital to start a panda burger chain, I would literally just grind you up and put you on buns right now. So you know what, isn't what China does nothing, right? You lose! Good day, sir! Thank you for tra- Willy Wonka. Thank you. No, here's the thing. I, I do have an opinion on this, too. Cute animals are tasty. That's just a fact of life. Endangered animals, even tastier. I've tried dolphin. What? Good shit. Hey, hey, here's the thing. No, the funny thing is, everyone in this room that's over the age of 25 has probably eaten dolphin. Because if we lived in the age of not dolphin safe too. <laughs> And, if t- and, I will, and I will be the first to say it. Tuna doesn't taste the same as it does when I was six. Tuna tasted fucking badass when I was six. <laughs> and I know it's just that sweet, sweet, tasty dog. Yeah, but then again, they're polluting the oceans more, so that's probably part of it. Eat bamboo, it's healthier. Bamboo is a killer, not a filler. Is it a narcotic? No, no, here's the thing. Have you, uh, all right, did, does anyone in this room watch Mythbusters? Show of hands, who watches Mythbusters? Did you see the Vietnam special where they actually grew bamboo through people? Yes. No. That was freaking badass. They literally did grow bamboo through ballistic gel dummies. Holy shit talking. And now I know what the hell you're doing. You evil son of a bitch. You are a threat to America, and everyone in this room should whoop your ass on behalf of Homeland Security because you're going to abduct the shit out of the next person you see in Grow Bamboo through. Let's go! Power I'm a PETA member! Oh, fuck you, you go! Fuck you! You stop to Nuki Mario! Get out of here with that! Oh! Hey, here's here's it, here's it. No, 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 here's it. I am a card carrying member of PETA. People for eating tasty animals. Woo! I was gonna say this right now PETA has no right to stop Tanuki Mario. Right now. Agreed. Tanuki Mario? The, the raccoon? Right. right. Okay. I'm just, I'm just making sure. Oh, Alright, anyways. We thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. You know, we appreciate your time. Thank All right, you, guys. Sora and Sora. Random Panda. Give them a round of applause. Tell me this man is Random Zombie Panda. This is dead. <laughs> I love him. All right, so now we're going to go get a... Well, you know, this brings up a good point, though. I mean, PETA. I mean, one of my favorite, 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 favorite shots of PETA... Real quick. ...is Pamela Anderson. Yeah, what you got? Pamela right? Anderson? Yeah, Pamela Anderson wearing a PETA t-shirt, walking out in broad daylight like it's cool, 
Leaving a KFC with a bag full of chicken. <laughs> that was, I saw that, that was... I mean, this was like not Photoshop, this was 100% legit. Real. Yeah, here's Pam, here's Pam Anderson just like walking around like it's no big deal with a big old bag of KFC wearing a pita t-shirt. You had me at KFC. <laughs> no, and this is what I'm talking about too. As Americans, we have the right to eat some fucking tasty animals. And if they're deep fried and covered in 11 herbs and spices, that makes them all the better. I mean, hell, Mississippi believed in it. Kentucky believed in it. What the fuck? Might as well make it an American tradition. Absolutely. I mean, fried chicken is like, it's almost as American as baseball at this point. You know? yeah. I will go to war with fried chicken if it interrupts the Simpsons. <laughs> Why the hell would it interrupt I the mean, Simpsons? Like, you know, think about this in the long run. Let's say we started chipping massive amounts of fried chicken over to the troops in Iraq. What a morale booster that would be. We would have this conflict solved in a matter of days. Probably. Uh, how fresh would it be by the time we got there? So you um, uh, considering all the preservatives that's in there... You open up a few franchises out in the desert, you know, you serve up some fried chicken to the Saudis, bam, problem solved. Yes. I do believe you wanted a slick fried chicken toasted on the Ah, well then, it seems our guests of the evening are here. Ladies and gentlemen, a count named Slick Brass and Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander! This is indeed a treat, because we are going to have an in-depth talk about their upcoming presidential campaign for 2012. I do, I apologize. I do have to, one microphone's broken. Yeah, one of those is not working. Yeah, grab the shirt. We're going to we're gonna share this one, all right? I don't mind sharing with you. Of course, you're gonna share. I would hope not. No. I do hate you. There, 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 right. there we go. All right. There we go. Okay. Sir, you are a consummate host. Let's have a round of applause for Mr. Cable, ladies and gentlemen, at Gobble tonight. I'd love to see all your sweat covered, shining faces here. I do apologize that I have to correct you, for you see, the personalities you have paged are not available at the moment. Because we're here to get a party on before we check back in with Swagger 101. As such, you are dealing with Toga Commander, an Woo! account named Silk Brass. And yes, yes I am. All right, because we're here, and we're going to return back afterwards for After Hours partying at WobbleCon. <laughs> That's right, After Hours GobbleCon, known as WobbleCon. So you have a teaser. Enjoy. Well, see, this is great right here. Like, you know, you want to be able to talk with a presidential candidate that can, in a sense, let their hair down. You know, relax a little bit. This is why Herman cain has been doing so well. People found out he came down to earth. You know, I mean, look, I'm just going to throw this out there. From Zeno? Bill Clinton cheated on his wife in office. If anything, that made him more popular because it showed that he's one of the boys. Clinton Yes. I, Herman. I'm not no, for Herman Yeah, Herman Cain. You know, there's a sexual harassment thing against him. You know, you look at in the grand scale of things, that's like the second base of cheating on your wife. So he's halfway to home. Okay, as the professor of swagonomics here, can I comment on fidelity and the top of the rope? Because this is one that strikes near and dear to my heart. So we're clear, if you're in a monogamous relationship, account named Silk Brass or Slick Brass, take your pick, and I doubt Toga or Cobra Commander either, we don't support infidelity. We support honesty and transparency. If you're in a polyamorous relationship, that's one thing. Excuse me, are you on stage right there, Lust? Hello? Hi. We talking. Don't make me take the rest off. Oh, I think it is. Yeah. I think that's the wrong threat to make to me. You know, there is some other voice warning about that mask. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Uh, <laughs> see, see, that, that's what happened. You get oh, no. one good up girl and... <laughs> Hey, hey, hey! And right. Zorm when you need right. a serious vampire. I don't um, like bad vampires touching me. Is that my fault? Right. Right. Anyways. Anyways. I'm pretty blasted right now. So, I, frankly, the audience is probably triple the amount I'm seeing. I'm curious to find out where you stand on some of the key issues. Let's. Issues. Let's yeah. go. Obviously, one of the big things on America's mind right now is the national deficit. What steps are you two going to take to try and, like, you know, get America out of debt, pay back its creditors, and get us back as the dominant superpower? One-two punch. You want to take the first hit? I'll take the right hand. I'd rather take the right hand. First. All right, so I'll leave with you. Be the straight Here we go. Time. First of all, legalizing marijuana as a taxable resource that we can harvest as a crop. That would be the first thing to rebuild our economy. Legalize it. What? Woo! Secondly, 
Rather than blood for oil and using oil as a natural resource, we will implement the electric car and various other solar power institutions of clean energy that are actually cost effective and have been, but have been tied up by lobbyists as the oil industry tries to chokehold our legislation. So that would be both cheaper and easier once implemented as a nationwide solution. It will require a little bit of sufferance for maybe a term, but if you elect us for two terms, you will see a turnaround that is exponential, will solve both our geopolitical crisis, our economic situation, as well as lower our carbon footprint in two terms, I can guarantee it. You are coming on strong there with a lot of great promises. Um, Cobra, follow up. <coughs> Where have I heard that before? I don't like with that one, man. I will come over there and teach you how to use a sound machine. So. In, in, a, in a word from the original Latin, irumaba, which means fuck your face, sound man. <laughs> That's right, we're educated. Cobra over. Commander, what do you got for me right now? I mean, it seems like you've got a lot on your mind, but I still can't tell. It's that blank look. I, I cannot figure out for the life of me why you wear the mask. It's one of two things. That, that is a very good question that I do not get enough. I used to wear the hood, and the hood was like kind of KKK, but not really. The mask is a mirror because when you look at the mask, you don't see me, you see yourself. You see the reflection of yourself. And the mask is made to make you look at yourself, wonder, I really want to look good, I want to be a better man. So when you look me in the face, you're looking yourself in the face. Do you want to lie to me and yourself? I don't think so. No, Toga no, no. Commander, the Everyman President. I will, yeah, that, that is fantastic. But like, me personally, I, I just wonder, you know, it, it's natural to be curious of what's behind a mask and have you see it. And part of me has decided that, like, you're either the sexiest person alive, yeah. and a stare gets women pregnant, and men's dicks explode. Well, well, realize, if I was the Mama ugly... told me not to come. <laughs> if, if I was the ugliest man on the planet, I would hide myself behind a blue wardrobe, one-piece suit with a cape. I am clearly in a toga with half of my body naked. I think I'm ready to show you the wild side of Cobra. Okay. While he reflects you, he's willing to expose flesh to show you he is mortal. Now, I have some quick questions for Cobra Commander. I mean, we've grown up, you know, watching you lead a terrorist force time after time after time again and come up with almost virtually no success. Well, see, here's the thing, like, um, I've told many before me, and this hasn't really gone out because like the G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Did you know the Cobra slogan was an American hero when G.I. Joe had to be douchebags and say a real American hero? Now, yeah, fuck America! Get the hell out of my country. Get out of our country. Seriously. And out. Now, G.I. Joe, a real American hero. <laughs> so you you are the weakest link, Goodbye! Our Lone Star Valkyrie program at work. We're already implementing solutions. I knew that Panda was a communist. I told you. Back to the question. This isn't McCarthyism. Anyways, back more so to the point. A real American hero, D.R. Drill, showed many kids and adults have grown up watching where Cobra Commando wears a blue outfit and has a silly cape. Mind you, capes are amazing. I suggest you try one as soon as possible. Wow. Was developed by the American oh, company Hasbro. Hasbro is a G.I. Joe subsidiary that tried to make Cobra look like a terrorist organization, the bad people, they tried to rule the world. In short, this is a slander campaign that has been running for over a decade. It is media spin doctor and it's wagging the dog, and we are going to issue a public indictment the first thing once we are inaugurated in office. Now, one point I want to make abundantly clear. Cobra Island is a unified nation recognized under the United Nations. Who attacked our nation without warning? G.I. Joe. Is that called a terrorist attack? Yes. Fuck you, G.I. Joe. You're the terrorists. America, baby! See, now this is why we like having guests like this on our show. We want to give you a chance, a chance to clear the air. Just and obviously like, it's just been a case of misunderstanding and a, bad press. Just, just like... Skeletor was just defending Snake Mountain from that Nazi Aryan man he there. Seriously! <laughs> he has an iron cross on his chest! By the way, also no, you're so right. Skeletor just chills in his home and here comes He-Man bashing down the door on a weekly basis to screw him up. It's... He's a fascist. And, and here's the thing. I'd like to point out that's also a subsidiary of Hasbro Inc. Training the Ubermensch of tomorrow, for what you may be unclear on is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, 
That was an Ubermensch doc indoctrination program. That is the Fourth Reich. If you support He-Man, you support neo-Nazism, just so we're clear. <laughs> Similarly, also typified by the largely blonde protagonist, also the Arbian Ubermensch, known as Duke of the G.I. Joes, just so we're clear, that is a KKK initiative within the American media. Go on. <laughs> no, I'm prepared to believe anything these days, but... All right, moving on. This is a question for the both of you to tackle together. Um, obviously, you know, you're the leader of a freedom force at this point in what we just established. You've obviously had a lot, of, a lot of guns at your disposal. Your men are extremely well armed, you know, at all times. How do you feel about, like, you know, gun control and making sure that we're putting guns in the right hands of people that actually, like, you know, know how to use them and will use them for the right purposes? Obviously, like, you know, America has a massive problem with, like, you know, senses killing with firearms, and this is something we need to curtail. And how do you plan on trying to <laughs> cut back on that? I don't actually don't need to whip out my guns as I've gone through biomedical problem. I am Iron Man under the flick. But, uh, well, like, this is a problem that first I let Silk Rat, Silk Rat, excuse me, handle, but then I will get to the point which will might surprise you, sir. This is where people confuse me as a liberal. I'm a moderate. Now, I am also a libertarian, which is to say I like my sex, dr drugs, and rock and roll. I also like my gun control. What does that mean? I'm a registered member of the NRA. Train your youth in how to use a gun so that there aren't gun-related incidents. When someone has proper training in how to use a gun, they will know responsibility. Lasering a crowd, lazy, errant aiming of firearms, these are the matters of a novice. That's what thugs and drug dealers. Wow. Yeah. I mean, good stuff there. Woo! Yeah. Yes! Woo! What? I'd like, you, I'd like you to show me one registered NRA member that has willingly or knowingly or even unknowingly committed an act of gun-related violence. It's usually children, which again is a bad rap, which we covered earlier, of bad parenting. Gun control has been confused with bad parenting. If you have a gun, lock it up, you douchebag. Bring the key with you. Derp. <laughs> we can't legislate intelligence. Wait, yes we can. If you missed Cobra Slick Brass, the panel, that's your fault. But we'll cover it again later, request it at your next con. My, my response is, uh, as you know, Cobra is very advanced in the technological scale. Um, I am working with both Arbico Industries, uh, extensive enterprises, and Dr. Mindbender, who, I don't know if he's at this convention or not, <coughs> He might be undercover. Um, Who's that... cover? Undercover! <laughs> we are working on a... You know in some TV shows and animes where you, you, t you pick up the gun and the handle registers your ID so only you can use it? So we're talking almost kind of a Judge Dredd kind of thing where it's like it literally embedded in the DNA. Only the person grabbing the gun can actually use it. So yes, however, <laughs> instead of just allowing the person... Whoever can grab it uses it. Please, please, I apologize. Thank you. Continue to tell me that. There's a reason your place failed. Uh, <laughs> only this warped reality. When you pick up the pistol, not only will it read your DNA, it'll read your IQ level, which is a mandated thing in our new regimen. So basically, you have an IQ level less than like the average. You are literally you too stupid to fire. operate a firearm. That makes incredibly good sense. <laughs> Once again, by training real soldiers, you know, as opposed to thugs with guns. That no statement. longer will spray and pray be an operative that we will allow in our armed forces. That statement is woefully unfunny, but all in the right way. It's because. All right, quick question, quick question, quick poll. How many people actually took the ASVAP when they were looking for, like, you know, options? Yo. I went in with about 30 people. I scored an 86. They tried to recruit me for almost six years because they wanted me so badly. 28 of the people I went with couldn't even muster a 22, and they got them in as foot soldiers. I'm going to. 
supplement that by saying, the U.S. Marine Corps across a variety of different realities still is sending me mail. Still. <laughs> I turned 18 a long, long time ago, just so we're clear. Now, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned the Judge Shred. Thank you. Could you repeat that, please? I'm still getting mail from all branches of the armed service, and they still think I'm a girl. Which is, to be clear, that's when my crew, thank you, the ASS Tiddler's crew, woot woot, can I get a woot woot? Thank you. Now, that being said, Otaku, you mentioned the Judge Dread program. We have established, oh, you did too. Yeah, did. We established an initiative in our previous press release where the judicial system will be revised to incorporate the Judge Dread program as marked by our signature Zorm Trooper, Mark Zero, as the prototype. So you're basically proposing dealing with crime at the point of impact. Boom, boom. The ancient Chinese philosophical art of Ching Ching Pao. <laughs> Alright, well, this that actually raises an interesting point. Now, are you two familiar with the Utah concealed carry laws? Yes. <laughs> For those of you that are unaware, um, Utah recently passed some laws. You actually can get a concealed carry permit in Utah, and non-residents can also apply for it. 18 states currently recognize non-resident Utah concealed carry permits, and 20 recognize Utah resident concealed carry permits. Now, how is this say? Is this something you're going to be looking to revise, eliminate, or almost encourage? Do you want to take this, or shall I? I prefer the man with the more guns than me to say this one. Fair enough. We do recall the rise of militias in the United States of America, and where are they based again? The state of Utah. This sounds like a dangerous counterinsurgency policy, and I'm going to refer to the forces with 40 years of experience in counterinsurgency and say this sounds like a dangerous initiative that needs to be spearheaded and headed off the pass. Because how would I take over the United States of America if I was not properly elected? I would establish a series of, oh my goodness, what are they called? terrorist cells based out of a state that has legislation that allows concealed carry permits that apply in other states to infiltrate. That sounds like comp cell paradigm, especially with three-man cell as the Utah initiatives were documented to have with one cell leader per cell, operating autonomously but within a collective. So basically what you're almost proposing is to fence off Utah and deal with everything in there one person at a time. All right. Have you ever heard of Snake Plissken? Yeah, I have. On the Android. It's Be, beyond that, what natural resource does Utah offer you the United States of America besides hayseeds and fanatics? Mormons. Copper. Polygamy. Okay. Polygamy. Copper. We'll re we'll address that later. But I'm all for again per the Intellectual Initiative Proclamation. Utah, by and large, viewing their test scores over the last two decades, is judged unfit for service and should be annihilated as the potential test subjects of our new nuclear clean energy initiative. And if we should happen to have a meltdown, well, it's now, Utah. Here's the thing. Who died? 20 people? <laughs> Utah actually does have... Inbreeds at that? Oh, that too. But Utah actually does have monstrous salt deposits that can be mined. Why not make use of the people there? There's a lot of salt in Utah. There's also a lot of salt on the moon. There's also a lot of salt in the damn ocean. If that's an argument for Utah, I'm going to refer you back to a man in his underwear kicking the British out of India. Go boil some ocean water and get yourself some salt. Okay. Okay. We don't need Utah for that shit. Seriously. So are you, seriously? Sorry, just, Utah I'm, brings us salt? Is that the argument to tolerate the okay. amount of ridiculous salt? Because we need more salt. We don't have enough salt. 75% of the Earth's surface. Really? <laughs> okay, okay. You, you got me there. You got me there. Obviously, there's enough salt in this room to make all of us salty and angry for the rest of our lives. You can harvest my sweat. You'll get alcohol and salt. There you go. Some current too with that. Okay, so basically, Indian recently. we effectively go down to four United States in the Union. I thought we had 57 territories. 
States. In Puerto Rico, Iraq, what was that? Oh, yeah, Britain. Um, Canada. Um, um, Canada. So we're talking, yeah, you're talking Mexico. about... Mexico. And the moon. And so, the oh, moon. And oh, the moon. I forgot Oceana. <laughs> so oh, oh, not only are we talking about fencing on Utah and turning it into a nuclear test ground, we're also talking about annexing nearby nations, too. Well, we gonna... haven't already. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not allowed for public eye. That's right. Cobra silk, excuse me, toga silk grass. Transparency in your government. We will tell you shit as it is, not as you think it is. Well, just because we've tapped so hardcore into their tourism markets that we sent drunk college students down there every no, spring no, break, no, 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 no. doesn't mean talking, we can I'm not talking invaded. about Tijuana. I'm talking about, you know that our money, both above board and below board, funds most of Mexico, right? The yeah. drug trade, the tourism trade, tequila. Do you know their national tequila rate of export? We're funding Mexico. It is an American territory. Understand that. The federales are on U.S. federal employ. <laughs> so you're basically looking to call in all debts, is what it basically boils down to. If we're supporting your economy by more than 49% of your GDP, you basically belong to us. First of all, let's be clear on that. If we support this logic, China owns us. That's why I'm following us. this very carefully. But yeah. understand that China will never call in that debt because they'll bankrupt a burgeoning resource. They want to wait for us to make money. No, China's never going to call in that debt because they can't stop putting lead in everything they send over here. It tastes so sweet, though. I'm just waiting for them to like, you know, send over boxed lead paint chips with fake anime characters on the front as like America's new favorite breakfast cereal. Keep eating that pocky. <laughs> Look, it's it's, it's, on the it's chocolate, sure, it's chocolate. <laughs> sure, it's a cookie. <laughs> okay, so, no, I, I think I see where you're going here, but like, aggressive expansion, but, um... No, no, no. We already have aggressive okay. expansion. Right, let me Since Theodore that. That Roosevelt and the Trust Busters and the Rough Riders, we've had a foreign policy of aggressive expansion. We just don't tell y'all about it, but we have seen the documents at the White House. Frankly, we are willing to share that information with the American public. Transparency in government, which is not a current paradigm by either party, Democrat or Republican. <laughs> well, no, here's the thing. Part of that problem is was what the Republicans did in the Senate. Um, you're all familiar that Obama, I mean, this is like one of the few great things he did. He started a website where you could literally go and look up almost any government fact you wanted to. It would tell you all about the spending, everything else. Republicans basically cut the budget on that program down to about ten dollars. I believe Wikipedia is still up, actually. Yeah, Wikipedia is still up. <laughs> but, but Republicans basically cut the budget on this program down to ten dollars. The price of maybe half a month of AOL One on dial-up with a twenty-eight A connection. But uh, anyways, so now the, it's come down. But at the same time, they've gone to the trouble of shitting on his doormat and saying you're not doing it. <laughs> but let's be clear. Because I love me some Obama, don't get me wrong. But once again, that man promised more than he could ever deliver in one term. We're honest about what we can deliver in one term. We can give you fundamental building blocks, but we can't capitalize on those unless you give us more than one term. You have to be able to support us for more than what we can immediately provide and have a little bit of breadth of vision, which granted the average American based on local test scores, would not be able to provide. But Look how much Riddle is out there. That's, uh, that's half the battle right there. But, uh, no, half the battle is red and blue lasers. But, um, <laughs> and the other half is known. That being said, what I will say is this. Look at this face. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, this face. Look at yourselves in this face. See your face in this face. Would you lie to you? Don't yeah. say yes, don't be a teenage emo, don't say yes. Seriously, the Miley Cyrus generation need not apply. Um, honestly, ask yourself, would you prefer people who are gonna sugarcoat things and tell you how you want it to be, or tell you how it is, and provide you factual resolutions, which may require some hard truths in the short term? Okay, so what you're basically telling the American people is, you effectively do have the solutions to the greatest crises, Crises facing American life these days, but it's not going to happen overnight. You have to say, you know, you have to be patient, and you have to give them. They basically need to give you the time to straighten it out. Going to be the 
I'll, I'll simply ballot. put it this way. Republicans, the extremists are, well, crazier than Al-Qaeda, and the moderates need to sack up and swallow some social programs that they may not agree with for the long-term benefit. Democrats need to get their shit together and realize that, oh, I can't have everything I want in some hippie, fun wonderful wonderland la immediately and stop acting like spoiled American teenagers who mommy and daddy said no to and go, but I want lit pal. Now there's a lot of talk on Capitol Hill that two-party politics is what really put us in this shithole that we're in right now. Which is why we represent a third party, the revitalized party, to inject some new fuel ignition into this political system, starting with a revision of the entire electoral college process, Thank which you. no political God. party has offered up until now. Do you want your Supreme Court judges static forever? Because no. last I checked, this wasn't a papacy as government. I'm just very, uh, yeah, you can get them all you want to but I'm just very glad to hear that, I mean, that forehead. <laughs> everyone of this generation know, should know that the Electoral College is just the most fucked up thing we've got. We voted a president into office that never served. How many generations can actually say that? And here's what I found most baffling. The Democrats basically shrugged, rolled over, and went, meh. I think the American people, I think y'all deserve better than that. Can I get an amen? Amen. Oh, man. Preach it, brother. Amen. Praise Allah. No, because these are elected That's officials, that. people that we have put in the office to serve the best interest of the American people. And I am I demand that short of the, um, the VP and the president, any elected official should be allowed a no confidence vote based on an appeal process where policies need to be voted in by the people, for the people. Which is to say, if you have a congressman that suddenly flips like, oh, I don't know, Christopher Shays, for example, not naming names, Christopher Shays. <laughs> Shouldn't you be allowed to answer to whether he gets to get his government pension, his extra, extra, extra health care, his stipend, his daily stipend where he's allowed to booze, coke, and otherwise encourage recreational activities, including funding his children through college while y'all suffer. I say that we give the same wiffle ball tour that we're giving George W. Bush to similar traitors against the union who are allowed to so capriciously flip on the American people. What do y'all say? To be clear, this isn't mob justice. You have to register at a certain IQ and a certain level of currency relevancy to be able to weigh in on this matter. However, it's not a shadow council either. Any American with enough motivation can reach these goals. And thus, you control the government, giving power back to the people. Fantastic. Woo! So I guess we have the people. technology. So I guess to wrap up this line of question is, how do you plan to get the Senate and the House to actually cooperate with each other and make some real change that's going to affect all of America? And not in like, you know, the years it takes these slow idiots, but I'm talking about, you know, soon. This is all you, Toga. You are, you are made to answer this question. know how we get the people that control the country and everything how to get them to do what's right? Free KFC for everybody. <laughs> no. As entertaining as that was, no. <laughs> Thank you for fulfilling that stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's two sides to the coin, to, to be a hobby dent, as it were. The, the scarred side is to, you know, not threaten them, because threatening is, is childish. We at Revitalized Cobra don't threaten people. We're very much with actions and doing things. You don't like it? I guess your puppies have to die. Sorry. So we promise and we deliver. A click. So it's just a matter of finally applying the right leverage to these bloated whores that have yes. sat on Capitol Hill for too long. And after you after you get them, there's the other side of the coin, which the nice side of the coin is, once you encourage them and they're going to do it, you say, Alright, well, now that we have you doing what you need to do, 
we will provide these things to you. Now these things aren't like, oh, extra pensions or stuff. It's just human, humane content. These people are in an office to work for the country, not to work the country. They are to do what is best for the people. So you will get what the rest of the people get, humane treatment. If not, then I guess a few more children have to go to war and die, whatever. We make sure. Shall I reveal with them? Shall I reveal the final policy? The I would love if you revealed the final policy. The final solution, which is to say, if you embezzle, if you are a party to lobbyist thinking, there is one solution. We give you the chair, like any sex offender or any multiple patricide, matricide, homicide perpetuator. We give you the chair, we televise it. And that is the double-edged sword that is public office on every scale of government. If you are corrupt, we are gonna fry you like a chicken wing, and we're gonna do it live and televise it so every last American man, woman, and child can see what the penalty of corruption is. Cobra! Cobra! Because you're gonna fry. You keep that suspecto la 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 shit to yourself. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, I myself am very excited about this upcoming election in 2012. You've inspired a lot of confidence in me. And I really do thank you for coming on the show tonight and basically willing us what your platform is. I really appreciated the opportunity to sit down and talk with you guys, and I definitely feel a lot better about the upcoming elections. Thank you, Rob. Rob Cable, ladies and gentlemen. I just meant Otaku. Otaku! Oh, oh, that was scruffy. scruffy. I'd rather call you Tata, my dear. Scruffy. He has a hard time letting go. <laughs> he was such a good doctor. Let it go. I'm not a doctor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's about all the time we have for Gobble tonight. We thank you so much for joining us. We know we have, you have a choice in late night television, or in this case, late night stagery with Christmas lights. You sound like you're on like NPR or something. With that that's awful, probably awful not light. a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> NPR is one of the last few honest radio stations out there. May I make Simon, an announcement? Yes, you may make an announcement. Give us a 15 minute intermission and we will be bringing you back Swatico 101 with a count named Slick Brad and the crew of the What A S S T S. And if that's not motivation enough for you to come, I, Cobra Commander, will have an advisor on that too. You can win a free Cobra Slick Brass t shirt. That's right, the most dedicated fan we find in the audience has been to all three. Panels will win a free Cobra Slick Brass t-shirt. And don't complain that it doesn't fit, because they don't fit anything. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rob Cable, this is the fabulous Scruffy. Thank you for joining us at Galvin tonight. Stick around. Swagger 101 is coming up. Have a great night. Hey. Well, I'm going to like being fabulous.